here to kick off the second half of the seventh annual Boston Ed Talks here at WGBH is Michelle Ciccone. Michelle is a technology integration coordinator at Krista McAuliffe Charter School in Framingham. Yeah? Okay. And she's here to take us on a journey of an internet education, one that shifts the focus from students' online etiquette to engaging them authentically in digital conversation. The internet is a powerful tool, but not everyone that uses the internet uses it powerfully. So how do we get there? In my work and in my travels, I've learned that the most pervasive educational approach that schools take to preparing young people to be better users of the internet is what's called digital citizenship. And the first time I heard that, I was really excited because that sounds really powerful, right? Digital citizenship. But as I got to understand how schools enact digital citizenship education, I started to see that it's very often watered down. It becomes this conversation about etiquette and a list of do's and don'ts. It seems like the underlying theory behind digital citizenship education is that the internet works best when its users are polite and kind to each other, which I guess isn't untrue, right? But is that the full story? Are those who use the internet most powerfully those who follow this list of do's and don'ts? I didn't think so, and so I set out to uncover a better way of preparing young people for digital engagement. And I thought, if I want young people to use the internet more expertly, I needed to become an expert. I needed to learn about the internet. So I set out. I attended conferences. I read widely. I talked to experts in the field. To be honest, I had a lot to learn because I am no techie. I was an English major in college, and I'm still most content reading a 19th century novel by Dostoevsky. And sure, I got really good at AOL Instant Messaging, but that was kind of, that was kind of the extent of it. Um, and at first, that felt like a real disadvantage, this non-tech background and working in ed tech. But I now see it as an advantage, actually, because if we're inviting more and more technology into the classroom and asking young people to use technology to create and analyze and learn and think, it's actually good for, to have people in on the conversation that are not techno-evangelists. So I set out to learn about the internet, and I learned a lot. And as I learned about the internet, this one uncomfortable truth kept coming to the surface, that the way that the internet works, it's not been built to bring out the best in its users. And in fact, it's been built to prey on our weaknesses. You know, we users of the internet don't even have a lot of control over the content that we see. Algorithms are constantly trying to predict what we want to see. And the websites and apps that have created these algorithms have a distinct motivation to try to get us to want to see certain things. Websites, they want our attention, they want our engagement, and they've discovered that the best way to get us engaged and interested is to make us afraid and put things in front of us that make us angry. In a lot of ways, the more I learned about the internet, the more powerless I felt. And you know, this has been in the news a lot more lately. Um, people are starting to learn about how the internet works, and people aren't happy with what they learn about. But this has not trickled down to the way that the internet is talked about in schools. There is still this emphasis on etiquette, on do's and don'ts. But I think that there's a better way. I think if we want the internet to be this powerful place, we need to empower its users. And the best way to empower is to teach how this thing works. And I think we as teachers, a lot of the time, we feel like the young people, the students that come into our classroom, they're the experts. What can we teach them about technology? And sure, young people are really good at using the internet for entertainment, but for purpose, not yet. And at one point in education, it was this revolutionary idea to say that every teacher is a reading teacher, and then every teacher is a writing teacher. Well, I think that every teacher is a digital citizenship teacher, but a different kind of digital citizenship. 
So what do I mean? My job is to develop curriculum to engage young people in these conversations. And I work with middle schoolers every day. And I've discovered that there's three essential components to this new type of digital citizenship education. And I want to share them with you tonight. Component number one, we need to encourage digital engagement in young people and then let them practice in our classrooms. And I know that sounds kind of scary. It sounds like maybe that's inviting chaos or even danger into the classroom. But here's the thing, today, if you don't have an online presence, that's suspicious. <laughs> and, and if we want young people to have this positive, professional, powerful presence online, we have to help them develop that. So teachers, start with one classroom conversation. Take a topic that you know engages a lot of interest in your students and move it online. Choose something controversial and let your students practice having thoughtful and evidence-based conversations with each other online. I'm constantly surprised and very happy with the high caliber of the conversation I have in my classroom when I do this. But as sure as I am it's gonna go well in your classroom, I'm also sure something's gonna go wrong. <laughs> Suddenly, magically, before your eyes, one of your students will transform into a troll. <laughs> <laughs> And they're going to start posting silly memes and inappropriate comments and a joke. But there's this wonderful moment when the rest of the students in your class turn physically to face that troll and say, hey, stop trolling. And when else can a troll get that sort of face-to-face -face feedback? <laughs> Component number two, start from a positive place. Now, I know because when young people interact with each other online, things can go wrong, and that's scary. And so our gut response is to speak to them in that fear. Don't say that online, don't do that. But we really have to move on from that conversation. Because if you've ever worked with teenagers or been a teenager yourself, you know that teenagers do not want to be scared into submission. It just doesn't work. So instead, if you want young people to engage in more positive and productive spaces online, have them create them. Have your students design and prototype a better social media app. Ask them what problem would they solve. Get them thinking like the ethical developers that we really need, and they will. And component number three, recognize that young people are already critical users of new technologies. In fact, I would say the middle schoolers in my classrooms are more cynical about new technology developments than the adults in my life are. We can tap into that cynicism and then turn it into power. For example, if we want young people to care more about the privacy of their information, if we want them to hold a little bit closer certain details about their life and their activities, teach them about cookies. You know, cookies, that little piece of code that websites and apps install into your browser that you just sort of blindly agree to when you check that I agree box to the terms of service that you didn't actually read and you have no idea what's in there. <laughs> Cookies that are collecting information on our activity across these websites and apps and then use that to customize our experience online. But then these websites also are able to turn around and sell that information to ad networks and other companies. If you teach users about cookies, I guarantee you're going to get users more interested in what's in those terms of service. I know because I see it in my classroom every day. So my message to you tonight is do not despair. The internet can be that powerful place we've always wanted it to be. And the young people in our lives are going to help us get there. They already see what's wrong with the tools that we've developed. They just need a little bit of practice and some help peeking behind the screen. Thank you.